Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are... Well, today is Marshall Monday, and we're wrapping up the, the Barbarian Paths. Uh, the Barbarian subclasses. Today we're going to talk about the Path of the Zealot. Oh, it's been a... It's been a long, hard path going through these Barbarian subclasses. I kind of feel like... Uh, I don't know. Like I lost my wallet or my passport or something really important. I've I've searched every place in the house, and now there's one last place under the refrigerator. If it's not there, I'm screwed. You're screwed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's not. It's not as bad as some, but yeah, still. It is. This is, I think, a very mediocre barbarian option. Like, it's a lot of love because of one really gimmicky feature that matters, like ones of times per campaign. I think that this base level barbarian, honestly, if you took all of the, if you took the gimmick feature out and said this was Berserker, I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. And you just rename everything Angry Man Yelling About Things. And I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. That's what this does. Um, this is about as bog standard a barbarian option as you can possibly get, minus Warrior of the Gods. And like, that's fine. At least this isn't the tr outer train wreck and travesty that is, you know, the the one that gives you an exhaustion, uh, Path of Berserker. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it, this is, I mean, Barbarian's not a good class. And I raved a lot about Beast because I think it's th th thematically cool and is a small little interesting decision that are particularly good in the hands of newer players that want a simple, streamlined option that still sells a good fantasy. I don't even still think this sells a good fantasy. I don't think this really lands the zealot in any meaningful way beyond the gimmick. And the gimmick we'll start with. Sound good? The gimmick is yeah, Warrior we'll of the Gods. Start with the gimmick. So at third level, your soul is marked for endless battle. If a spell such as Raise Dead has the sole effect of restoring you to life but not on death, the caster does not need material components to cast the spell on you. All right, now does that count for spells like True Resurrection and stuff? Sure does. All right. That's, I mean, that's kind of neat. Uh, kind of neat. If, when you get up into those expensive spells, uh, like, all right, let me, let me ask you this. You are... Who gets a cleric gets true resurrection? Yeah. Okay. You're you're a high level cleric. You get this spell. You don't have a lot of money, or you do, but you don't want to. You don't want to blow it. But can you just go around like raising barbarian after barbarian from the dead that's been like dead for like three hundred years? And you know, yes, they're and they're they're grateful. So you've got this Maybe. whole barbarian <laughs> army. They might have been in Valhalla having the greatest party battle of their well, life, the, the, and then the you took them out of be, that. The soul oh, has true. to be willing, right? Yeah, that's true. So. yeah, the soul does have to be willing. Okay, they, they'd probably I, be grateful. I think you're touching on why people like this ability. It's because the world building implications of it are really cool. The world building implications of the ability of for you to freely resurrect things without costs means you can just have armies of zealots buried somewhere. Go over to them three thousand years later. I guess it has to be within a couple hundred years or cover the resurrection. Whatever. Go it is, to yeah. them within a reasonable amount of time and just like bring them all back. Just be like, all right, team, I need two weeks, and then we'll have a whole army at our disposal ready to go back and enrage, and it'll cost you nothing. Like that's thematically pretty cool. It's not a real ability. It just isn't. If I mean, it could be though. You don't have to have this army ready to go. You have to find clues and. Uh... Ask around, where is such an army buried? If you're playing this subclass, though, oh, does no. that matter at all? No, 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 no. I'm talking if you're playing the cleric. Never mind. Sure, you're talking about if you're yeah. a DM world building. You're talking about no, coming talking up with cool ideas I'm... for plot structure and stuff. That has nothing to do with I'm talking playing about the subclass. If, I, if I'm the cleric. Yeah, which has nothing to do with this no, issue. No, no, like, no, nothing at all. Like, if you have this on your character sheet, how do you use it? The answer is you don't. You don't. Somebody else does. Yeah. This is an excuse for you to die more often because you could get revivified. But, like, why does that... You don't care? Like, this isn't going to average... I don't think this is going to make change many barbarians' minds from throwing themselves recklessly into danger. Like, I think a barbarian's pretty regularly prepared to throw themselves recklessly into danger. It's their whole identity. And I don't think the fact that it no longer costs my cleric 100 gold to get me back is necessarily going to be the discerning difference between going in or not. Well, you still want to go in if your, your cleric you, doesn't have it prepared and a slot banked, right? Yeah, your cleric might be expecting reimbursement. Maybe. I... I think this feature actively is is fun. It's a cool little ribbon, and yeah. if 
And I, I will give this subclass this credit. The other feature you get is Divine Fury, and it is a great feature to get out of the gate. And these two together, if the rest of the subclass gave you a lot more flavorful like additions, I'd be way higher on it. Because I think it starts in a really solid place. Yeah. Warrior of the Gods is like a ribbon. It's cute. I get it. It's fun. It is not a com oh, compelling reason to play the subclass on its own. Divine Fury is, though. So Divine Fury is starting when you choose this path at third level. You can channel Divine Fury into a we your weapon strikes. While raging, the first creature you hit on each of your turns with a weapon attack takes extra damage equal to D6 plus half your Barbarian level, which adds up. The extra damage is Necrotic or Radiant. You choose whenever you gain this feature. So this is basically every single turn, you do a bonus D6 plus 2, D6 plus 5, somewhere in that range of damage. That's a good chunk of extra damage. It's kind of like getting the free hit in every single turn. And that's fine. Yeah, especially if you're playing with a uh, great weapon master already. <laughs> Those mods are going to stack up really yep. fast. You're going to be like, my flat mod I'm adding to this is a 17. Your DM's going to be like, what'd you just say to me? But like, it's before <laughs> you roll any dice? Uh, yeah, it's it's entirely fine. It's kind of bland. It's like, oh yeah, you just do more damage on hit. Sure, that's fine. Doesn't need to be all that exciting. You get a really big flavorful ribbon of the Warrior of the Gods. It's got big world building implications. But you'll note there's not really any out of combat utility stuff happening here. There's not anything that really makes you better outside of attacking things. And, you oh. know, maybe at third level, it's fine. Maybe you get something at sixth level. Spoilers, you do not. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else you want to say about Divine Fury? It's just solid. No, fine. It's, uh, turn. You know, some extra bonus damage. That's nice. Yeah. Also, this is a big incentive to get your uh, Polar Master builds out because this can trigger once per turn, not per round. So you can do this on uh, Opportunity Attacks as well, which is meaningful. You actually, like, care about that. Um, oh, it does say on each of your turns. I lied. JK, JK. Not Opportunity Attacks. Uh, it has to be your turn. That's a lot lamer. It could, it could just say once per turn. It's not either here nor yet. Um, fanatical focus are a six level feature, then moving on. So starting at six level, the divine power that fuels your rage protect if your rages protects you. Can protect you. We get that, you get the gist of it. If you fail a saving throw while raging, you can re-roll it and you must use the new roll. You can use the ability once per rage. There's a feature in the fighter sub uh, the fighter class. It's called Indomitable. I'm gonna read that feature to you right now, and you might notice there's <laughs> something a little bit uncanny. Um, you can re-roll a saving throw that you fail. If you do so, you must use the new roll. Oh, yep. hey, I just read that. Fanatical focus is indomitable, but once per rage, as opposed to once per short rest. Yeah, okay. Do you get anything else? Do you get a cool, like, divine light? Do you get a cantrip? Do you get, you know, uh, the ability to commune with gods or anything like that? Do you get, like, some payoff for your conviction? Nope, this is it. Just indomitable. That's fine. Once per rage, not rerolling a known failed save is fine. Like, that's going to save you from some saber dies. It's going to be a good method in the upper tiers of, like, not dying, but it's boring as sin. Yeah, and that's the... uh, not something I'm taking this for. Yeah. If this were paired alongside a feature like Warrior of the Gods, but it gave you something to do out of combat, ideally, I'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. That's that's interesting, at least. You get a reasonable defensive feature and then some cool lore stuff. And so you just are better at handling one saving throw for poor rage. Yeah, I mean this. It maybe it should have been per short rest or something because uh, per rage means you're in combat. You can't use this for, uh, you know, dodging a trap or something. You know. Nope. Has to be while you're angry. If the sling gets thrown up on you and mind controls you, well, fanatical focus not helping you out. All right, keep moving. Yep. Uh, Zealous presence is the tenth level feature. You learned to channel power, divine power, to inspire zealous create others. As a bonus action, you unleash a battle cry infused with divine energy. And if I didn't say any of these words, you'd have no idea it had anything to do with God. Up uh, <laughs> to 10 other creatures of your choice and 60 feet of you that can hear you gain advantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the start of your next turn. Okay? You want to use this campaign can you finish a long rest. Long rest is a lot for what is... Everyone gets advantages this turn. One turn, yeah. Yeah. And it's also uh, other. Wait, what? So up to 10 oh, other creatures doesn't... of your choice with the 60 feet of you that can hear you gain advantage on days of those for next turn. So you don't get these benefits. Ah. Uh, man, this is ancestral guardians all over again. <laughs> My Would have been so busted for it to include you? Like, you already have reckless attacks, so you didn't really get that much overlap there. My grandparents hate me. My god hates me. <laughs> god won't even let you talk to him. Like, and you're a zealot. You're, like, dying for him over and over again. There's also nothing else here. It's just this battle cry. So once per long rest, and it's, I keep wanting to say short rest because it sounds like that's what it would be, but it's not. It's once per long rest. It's like, okay, everyone that's in 60 feet of me, you can have advantage for a turn. Yeah, this could have been once per rage. This could have been once per rage. It'd be like big rage turn. Everyone engages in a super powerful attack. Um, 
And again, like, nothing about this screams zealot to me. This just well, I mean, they angry the man yells confidence. Yeah, I mean, this could be a bard feature. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see any lore kind of coming through here. Oh no, it, it's me. It's a, not a great tenth level feature. A one for long rest for this effect is not that compelling, and then. It's got no flavor attached to it either. It's just entirely void and bland and sad. Uh, and then, then we got Rage Beyond Death, which is the 14th level feature. Beginning of 14th level, the divine power that fuels your rage allows you to shrug off fatal blows. While you're raging, having zero hit points doesn't knock you unconscious. You still make death saving throws and you suffer normal effects of taking damage while at zero hit points. However, if you would die due to failing death saves, you don't die until your rage ends. And you then and you die then only if you still have zero hit points. Basically means while you're raging, you can't die. And that's pretty sweet. All right, but um, there are... I mean... There are ways to kill circumventing death saves, right? I mean, like, yeah. well, how does that? How do, how does death work here? I I understand you drop to zero, you start making death saves, mm -hmm. and you either wake up or you die. Yes. Now, here, like, or let's say I stab somebody, falls over, I stab him again. Is that instant death? Automatic or? failed death saving throw. Oh, all right. That's how it works. Yes. All Any right. instance of damage when a creature is dying at zero hit points, they automatically receive a failed death saving throw. Any amount of damage. Any amount of damage. Also, on your saves, rolling a one gives you two automatic fields, uh, and then on a success right. rate, on natural 20, you get two automatic All right, successes. so I, I, I stab this guy. He drops over. He's at zero hit points. I run him through a wood chipper. Mm -hmm. That's one failed death save. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. And then um, he shrugs it off. Yeah. So I this feature is I undeniably cool. Yeah. Barbarians also get a feature called Relentless Rage that kind of stacks with it. So it says starting at eleventh level, your rage can keep you fighting despite grievous wounds. If you drop to zero while you're raging and don't die outright, you can make a DC ten con save and drop to one instead, which does kind of stack with this, but like not really, because you just you're fine going to zero as long as you can keep the rage up. And the only way then you kind of die is if you have to stop being angry, like they restrain you or something, right? Like you could have to stop making attack rolls or they have to stop doing, um, you know, things to you. Because like persistent rage comes at 15th level, which says your rage is so fierce that it only ends if you fall unconscious or you choose to end it. So like, you'll just be a really, uh, uh, they'll lock you in a cage. You're just angry man who refuses to die for the rest of time, which is pretty cool. Um, I mean, again, restraint though, you can always stab yourself. Yeah, and once you have persisted, you don't you don't have to make attack rolls to have that happen oh, at all. Right. Um, but like if, in the instance where you're stabbing yourself or restrained, they might be able to prevent you from doing that, right? Yeah. Like if you're paralyzed with a whole person. All right. That's um, different. Yeah. And again, this is a single level before you get the I cannot die anymore while raging because I can just choose to maintain my rage indefinitely and I will not get knocked unconscious. Um, you can get knocked unconscious other ways, I guess. That's a way that you could die, but like it's a cool capstone feature. I yeah. I just like it a lot. I don't like anything in between here and then. And notably, I also think it feels very zealoty, right? Like, oh, God oh, yeah. won't let me die. No matter how many bullets you put at me, no matter how many times you cut my head off, I will keep fighting. Very metal. Um, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Compared to the other options, I mean, maybe. I no, I think you're better off going with something that's not. You, you don't want to be having the goal of going past zero. You know, if you can not do that, you're always better off. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of encounters where this just isn't a feature, right? It, in the encounters where you don't drop, this doesn't have text. And barbarians are giant wells of hit points with damage yeah. resistance. They're not intended to drop all that often, right? They're going to stick up and stay healthy a large amount of the time. If you're playing like an epic tier campaign... This is not a good enough feature to compete with casters. It just isn't. It's not a good enough camp, uh, capstone to compete with even like things like the likes of paladins. Things that have basic movement abilities are going to outclass you like in every way, shape, or form. What are you going to do that while you someone casts a second level spell levitate on you, puts you 15 feet up in the air, and you're just flailing angrily? That's where you're at, right? Like You can't die, sure, but you're not going to do anything productive because you don't have anything productive to do. Maybe your fanatical focus gets you out of the single second level save. You're like, haha, I'm not levitating today, nerd. But like, <laughs> I don't know. I think this option highlights that even the best of the barbarian subclasses aren't good. And they need a lot more meat in them to make up for the horrendous 
base class, and this I don't think provides enough. Like Divine Fury once per turn getting a big chunk of damage is the bulk of the subclass, I think. And that is not a compelling reason to stick with it, right? Like um... No. Oh I don't know. But I mean, this one gave us a, a little bit of fun stuff to talk about, but I I just don't see anyone taking this to fourteenth level. Like, yeah, I don't even see like even if you're starting in the upper tiers, I still want to play a zealot. Like Rage Beyond Death is cool, but you have to die for it to do anything. Yeah. What if you put a subclass that was good at not dying? Yeah. Or a class that was better. Zealous Presence is a really boring feature. Fanatical Focus is a really boring feature. Dude, Divine Fury right, is but, right, fine. That said, when you do get to use Rage Beyond Death, I'll bet it's a lot of fun. Oh, I'm sure. That might honestly be like, if you get to, like, if you're willing to sit through 14 levels of Barbarian to get to it, you'll have the couple of encounters feel like it was worth it. Those six months of my life where I just took the attack action over and over again and was AFK in combat, just, you know, texting because, or out of combat just because I had nothing to contribute to this game past fifth level. Um, yeah. Then at 14th level, you had your epic moment where no quantity of skeletons would put you in the ground, and that was sweet. But, like... I'll tell you who this is for. This is a for a player play, uh, participating in a 14th level one-shot. Yeah, maybe. Where you're like, you are going to be put it against the Tomb of Annihilation. You just get great. I start raging and don't stop. Yeah. No quantity of traps will kill me. Nothing will kill me. I'm just going to charge in there and just beat people to death until I eventually uh, be knocked unconscious somehow. Ah. And honestly, right. like, I, I keep reading Rage Beyond Death expecting there to be, like, a, a hiccup, like, a way that this ends early, specifically just because Persistent Rage is the level after it. But no, there aren't any other words around that really just does mean once you, if you just don't stop raging at 15 plus level, you cannot die. Until you uh, get knocked Sam, unconscious. Sam, don't don't try to weaken this. Yeah, I know. It, but this feels like something that would try the wizards would try to weaken, right? Yeah. It, it feels like it's something where it's like, oh, not being able to die is way too powerful. It's not. And this is also just cool. It's a shame it happens so late. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe this just serves a C because the top on fantasy is kind of awesome and the early game is fine and the mid-tiers are just really bland. I feel like it deserves a C because it's uh, probably better than things we've given a C. <laughs> Maybe I I don't know. Yeah, I wish I could go back and see really quickly what we gave all the other barbarian subclasses. Someone brought up a comment that we should have a, a single video where we just show the rankings. We talk about it. I think that's a good idea. I think Ooh, we should think do a terrible like, idea. Like retrospective. Here are the barbarian subclasses. No, Let's talk I, about them best to worst. So inconsistent. <laughs> like, yeah, and that's, then we'll bring it all back together and be like, "Wow, we missed the ball on that one." All or, right, all right, yeah. If we can acknowledge that. I can acknowledge that. I pretend oh, I mean, I, I readily acknowledge that. Yeah, I, was saying, I think we're both fine enough at it. Yeah. I, I was just, uh, I thought you meant like, uh, let's put them all together. That's our video. And, ooh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about where we put them, where they should be, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good I don't idea. like Path of the Zealot. I think people take this more often than they should. Uh, people just shouldn't Do put barbarian. That's where I think it then comes down to. I've know. I've heard a lot of people like the subclass a lot. I've seen I two people take it. I taking it like, to level so three. Boring. Kill level three? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, play three levels of Barbarian for this, and then multi-class into something else. Get that bonus damage. Then you're not even scaling Divine Fury. Because <laughs> it adds it half your Barbarian level, so, like, yeah, you're getting not... a D6 plus one once per turn. Huzzah. All right. One level of Rogue different. is better than that, right? <laughs> yeah. The scaling isn't amazing, though. Half your Barbarian level. I mean, by the time you're 20th level, you're getting D6 plus ten. How how big a difference is that making? Finding? I think it. I think the pl if you get to level ten, the plus five feels really good. It's just like double your strength mod, basically, right? Because yeah. whenever you, it's all about those mods that are stacked on top of each other, and your base damage feels really high. Um, at casual tables, that is, of course, if you're playing it anywhere that's like you know trying to max out all of the nooks and crannies of character, it's still gonna feel like crap. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, see, it is then. Now, commenters, okay. if you love anything else about this, let me know. Maybe you feel that I don't... Maybe there is enough fantasy fulfillment here where you do feel like a warrior of God by playing this archetype. I yeah, know. Let us, let us know. Um, if, if Sam was correct and this is more popular than I expect it should be, then, uh, yeah, let us know that, too. 
All right, that was ah, the last of the barbarian paths, path of the zealot. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. As always, let us know what you think in the comments, and like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.